For more on what came out of that briefing today, we're joined by the South African Democratic Teachers Union, uh, and that is uh, Mugwena Maluleka. Thank you very much uh, for your time this afternoon. Now, there were a number of issues that the minister touched on in the briefing in Pretoria today that looks to appreciate uh, teachers across the country. But I suppose one of the most important uh, issues she touched on, and she said that there is a commission that has been established to look into issues like this one that there has been a changing environment that teachers are operating in and that is because the changing behavior of learners talk us through the environment that uh, teachers in south africa are operating in and how they've had to deal with that alongside the behavior of learners which has changed dramatically as well before let me uh, refer, let me uh, greet you and greet you or your viewers at home and thank you for this opportunity. The situation in our school is very dire. Uh, you have a teacher who is facing a grade two learner. A grade two learner is eight years old, and that particular grade two learner refuses literally uh, to do homework. Really refuses to take any instruction from a teacher. So our teachers are working under very difficult circumstances um, as we speak, and majority of them basically are going to leave. The the teaching fraternity on the basis that there is lack of discipline, lack of support, lack of cooperation, and so forth. That's the landscape of education we're finding ourselves in uh, today. And so the teachers, as we celebrate them in, in October, yes, indeed, they are parents, because when we were trained, we took a, 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 a deliberate um, a, you know, oath that uh, we are in local parentis, therefore we need to care for our children. This is what our teachers are doing, a uh, majority of them in our schools, but the environment needs to change the environment needs that we work as a community, as a society, to ensure that uh, we deal with this particular lack of discipline, lack of respect, violence against teachers, violence against the students, and, and, and obviously the attacks that we see on a daily basis are as a result of a society that is violent on its own. It is not about the school, it's about the society. Mm, and let's speak a little bit more about the support that teachers would need uh, to deal with unruly learners. Like you say, the violence increasing uh, at various levels of age. I mean, an eight-year-old, you say, uh, being disruptive at that age already. The kind of support that um, uh, schools or teachers would need in this regard, but also learners, because one would assume that uh, the circumstances that a learner comes from may determine the attitude that they present in the classroom. True. Uh, the background of Elena, from the home where she comes from or he comes from, determine basically the, the the progress that particular Elena is going to make. If you come from a home that they they, they say education um, is an enabler, and education has got to be taken, and the opportunities given to you, you need to grab them with both hands. That particular Elena, despite the environment at the level of the school being problematic, a dire and so forth, that particular learner has resilience. That particular learner is going to go through that particular situation. So the support we need is very simple. We need the parents to give us the support by making sure that learners understand that education is a duty. Loving to your study is a duty. We have a duty for those who fought for us, who liberated us to where we are today, to have free education in our school. We have got to do any, it's just a simple thing, just study and study. It's a duty for us to pay back for the parents that are working so hard for us, we need to pay back them. It's a debt that we have and we have to pay the students and therefore they have to do that. The second support level that we need basically, it is that the Department of Social Development and the Department of Education have got to work together so we can share in the social services that are there because we don't have enough social workers, we don't have enough um, the occupational therapists in our schools where we are able to detect a problem of you know, hearing impairment, eye impairment, or any other behavioral problem, or you know, you know, the slowness in terms of development, those we cannot loan to them. We need the support from our employer and the government as a whole. So we need that. We need the support from the SGB. The SGB can't be interested in how they get the tenders and then who has got to get the post and all this that we see posted there. It is an indictment for us having fought to making sure that we free our country and then we have got people who are enslaving others by selling posts including the parents i mean these are the parents who are selling posts together with the teachers there what do you hope to have as a school to have a principal who have got a post and you think your children are going to get proper education no it can't be we need their support they need to stay away from these particular things so that we can have a better education and quality education so we need books 
that is one support that we have at home. Can we encourage our society to donate readers to our children? Because the child who reads at home, the child who is able to read will then be able to better and their conduct and their behavior begins to change at the level of the school. This is research. This is what we know as the teachers, that if we get those particular resources, we will change the landscape in our schools. Mm. Another uh, situation that looks to better the uh, learning process for the learners, um, apart from the support systems that you've just mentioned there, is uh, this Bella Bill that has been a contentious one. But ultimately, some are arguing that it, uh, it really just uh, takes away the exclusionary um, um, uh, powers that SGBs had in terms of certain admissions that they would allow in their schools and districts. Um, and it opens up the doors for uh, access uh, to learners across the country. Uh, what are your thoughts on the bill and the arguments that have been put forward by the likes of the DA that are now taking it to court? Well, we as to are happy that uh, the, um, the portfolio committee has finally closed this particular chapter. There was enough uh, public hearing, uh, serious consultation as required by the law. We appreciate that. We also appreciate the fact that some of the contentious issues have been resolved. In particular, this one of real admission and access to school. This is a constitutional issue that you cannot, as an SGB, really use discrimination of language, discrimination of any other things against the land. And, uh, you know, when, when all of us were happy that we have a breakthrough in 1994, we trusted each other. We thought that, that all of us are going to work together to build this particular country. But we realized that there are some who are still using the apartheid benefits uh, because they benefited from apartheid to bar others from accessing the schools to the extent that they would want to reduce the school into one um, language school, whereas we are a multilingual uh, society, a multicultural society. My problem, basically, it is that this particular bill, um, as it is, even if they take it to court, we have to fight to have social cohesion, to making sure that we integrate our schools, we democratize our schools. We cannot be, you know, having people today like the DA that is still fighting for apartheid, uh, you know, such as infrastructure and a setup. Unfortunately, and this is unfortunate, it is that maybe we rushed too much into reconciliation and thought that people are ready to accept that they have wronged us, that they have oppressed and degraded us, and therefore they will show remorse and therefore they'll come closer to us. That's the danger. That is the lesson that don't forgive a person who doesn't want to ask for forgiveness. We forgave the likes of the DA and the NP. And we thought that, no, these are the people that were going to live together. But here they are, clamoring, wanting apartheid to live forever in our country. We will not accept it. They will still lose the court case. Even if they don't lose the court case, we'll make sure that learners are, are admitted in any school in this country. Mm, that's a very important point to raise, and I suppose we will leave it to, to the courts to decide on a way forward before we ventilate these issues uh, any further, Mr. Manuleka. But another issue uh, that has been lamented on in uh, the school system, and I'm sure uh, Satu is very worried about it as well, is the infrastructure under which learners are forced to learn um, under. Uh, uh, this for years has been something that the Department of Basic Education is uh, grappling with, whether it be pit latrines, uh, the lack of uh, clean water in schools, uh, electricity and uh, um, structures under which uh, they can learn. Um, your thoughts on the strides that have been made by the Department of Basic Education, but also what needs to be done for teachers and learners to ensure that they are safe when they are going to school? Well, in terms of the infrastructure, we cannot say we are happy that in 30 years of our democracy, we still have other children and other teachers were working in schools that did not have, um, you know, uh, um, um, uh, elect electricity, that they, they work in the schools that does, doesn't have water, a school that do not have the necessary uh, sanitation. And obviously, while the Department of Education says they're going to make sure that they work up until the end of March next year to eradicate, you know, pit lab things, to eradicate mud schools and so forth, we do not believe that the progress is worth celebrating because we are supposed to have no school operating in those particular kind of an environment. We're supposed to have each and every school in this country having sanitation, because sanitation is about dignity. It's about our people. It's about knowing very well that apartheid and colonialism has designated the value, which is far below any bar 
for African people. Hence, they have accepted that the pit latrine is, is, is necessary and therefore it must be appreciated. We cannot have a system that starts to appreciate things that were forced upon us and have taken away our dignity. And we cannot celebrate that today. So we, we, we feel that uh, we need to make sure that come the end of the year, we must have a proper, proper, uh, you know, account by the minister to then say, we will say goodbye to pit latrines, we will say goodbye to infrastructure that is not safe. Going to school, uh, we again depend on our parents, we depend on the community. The violence and the crime is committed in the society, and then the school, being a macrocosm of the society, find itself having been a target of those people who are there. Work with the police as the communities. Let's form groups, let's form clubs that are able to monitor that our schools are safe. We have got a campaign that we said, I'm a school fan. We expect churches, we expect young people's clubs, we expect bicycling you know, cycling clubs to form part of this particular campaign and say, I am going to be the fan of my school. I am going to make sure that the environment around my school is, uh, is drug free, is bully free. This is the society that we need to be building at the end of the day that cares, the society that works together, and not this particular society that the DA is clamoring to, you know, exclusion and separatism that we find ourselves in. We don't want that society. Mm. And then finally, if you will, Mr. Mugwena Manuleka, there is an issue that the minister also spoke about, uh, the alarming levels of teenage pregnancies. And while uh, young learners are getting pregnant outside of school premises, uh, there have been uh, scary instances where teachers are engaging in sexual relationships with learners. What kind of conversations are you having as a union and other related stakeholders around this issue on educating, uh, and protecting learners uh, from um, uh, uh, um, increasing instances of this nature um, in our schools. This is a very um, uh, worrying situation about teenage pregnancy. Um, the issue of sexual harassment or sexual you know, uh, relationship between the teacher and our learners in our country. It's a worrying situation. And as a, as, a, as a union, we are the only union in South Africa that have signed a collective agreement with the employer to protect this particular girl children. Uh, that find themselves having been abused, assaulted by those that they regard as parents at the level of the school, that they must no longer be subjected uh, to these gruesome and multiple um, hearings that we used to have in our country. Now they have put a single hearing by a qualified commissioner where they cannot be able to buy the departmental officials because they were colluding in terms of this particular thing, where they cannot be able to buy. But we are still seated with a situation where parents are being bored despite the fact that particular child has reported that I'm sexually molested, assaulted by a parent at the level of the school being my teacher, the parents are being brought not to come forward and making sure that that particular learner present evidence. Again, let me go back to the community and say, this is not the community we fought for. We didn't want to build this type of a community that parents would really regret the 3,000 rents that they've been bought and therefore they sell the life of a child who has been raped because this is a statutory rape because the child is younger than 16 years of old, of age and therefore is a school child. And therefore this has got to really come to an end. We have what we call uh, men as partners, as program of the organization on, a, on an annual basis where we engage in a conversation with ourselves as men and say, are we still living up to to our calling, that being of caring and protecting our children at the level of our schools. And therefore, we need to go out there and then be able to multiply the number of teachers who, who still care and expose that do not care and making sure that we're having a situation in our school where the profession is protected against this type of situation. So, yes, we're working very hard to making sure that we are able to root out and eradicate um, from its roots this uh, sexual um, you know, assault on our children. Thank you very much uh, for your insights on the uh, briefing delivered by Minister Angie Motecha this afternoon. That is Satu's uh, Mugwena Manuleka joining us this afternoon to speak about the various issues that the basic uh, Department of Education uh, faces continuously, but also some of the strides that have been made in improving the learning and the teaching space in South Africa.